My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're coming in from. Sure. Uh, my name is Denarius Lewis. I'm a motivational speaker, author, uh, community activist, a man with many titles. Um, I'm coming from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Awesome, Minnesota. So you guys don't say soda over there. You say pops. <laughs> yes, we do, unfortunately. Soda pop is all the same thing. It all has sugar and it has calories. <laughs> Amen to that. Ain't that the truth? That's fact right there. So let's dive into it. Thinking Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. When did you start? How did you start with that book? Sure. So I'll take it back to 2013. Um, I was going through a very troubling time in my life. I survived the summer of 2013 with a dollar and seventy-eight cents. And so when I was going through my homeless stage, um, I was I had a friend. She said, "Hey, you need to watch the movie called The Secret." And once I started to learn, you know, I watched that movie, The Law of Attraction. Um, the, the books, the movie said, um, do what professionals do, go where professionals go, and wear what professionals wear. So I joined the Chambers of Commerce. I met a mentor, and she also put every book into my realm. Um, her, her, her mentor was actually Bob Proctor. And so once I, I know, right? And so I was like, oh, I just got done watching The Secret. This is The Law of Attraction in its own, like, you know, realm. And then she, put, she picked up the book and gave me, you know, Think and Grow Rich. And ever since then, I picked that book up when I was 19 years old, broke. And it really helped me understand that you must manifest everything that you desire, but it starts internally. And so I was 19 years old, you know, very broke, you know, sad, depressed. And when I, once I picked that book up, I understood that if I want to plant a seed, I am the seed. And if I want to water it, I have to do the necessary action steps to do so. That is awesome. So what were a couple of the first principles that kind of attracted you the most? And you're like, oh, my God, I got to implement these things. What were those couple of principles? The first principle was uh, basically having clear intent. Sometimes we have a very convoluted mind. You know, life gets in the way, stress. And you really can't attract or manifest anything when you have those stress factors really always going. So once I learned how to just take an ease, take a pause and meditate, I was able to write down my intentions. Where do I want to see myself in the next two, five and 10 years? And ever since I've been able to build clear intentions, those clear intentions have ultimately had to manifest. And it all just started with me just saying, hey, this is what I deserve, this is what I desire because I am you know, great, I am wealthy, I am prosperous. Despite what I had in my bank account at that time, I knew that my situation was only temporary and so once I was able to just have a clear intent, despite everyone else's, you know, the naysayer and saying, you can't be a motivational speaker, you don't have a degree. And at that time, I, and at that time I, had, I used to stutter a lot. I've had nine concussions from lots of years of wrestling. I'm a big wrestler and whatnot in college and high school. And so once I was a, you know, who says, who can tell me that I can't do something when I know I can? Because just because you have the lack of limitations in your life does not mean you have to put those on me. And when I was able to build that confidence and eliminate, eliminate a lot of the insecurities that I have, because, you know, everyone has insecurities, but if we're able to tackle those insecurities, we're able to overcome them. So having clear intention was the number one thing that gave me the clarifying confidence to say, hey, I can do anything and more because I know who I am in this journey. That is awesome. How did you know that you could do it? Well, um, how can anyone survive a whole entire summer with only a dollar seventy-eight cents? being a hustler. So when I was able to hustle and literally just be a humble person, my friends knew that I didn't have much in my pocket. They were feeding one of my closest friends. She was a roommate. She was feeding me at one point, taking me to Taco Bell, buying groceries for me. And when I was, when I was able to just drop that, you know, we all, we all have an ego, but when you're able to drop it and just be genuine enough to ask, you shall receive. It's really hard to, you know, ask for help. We have pride that gets in the way. We always want to do it ourselves, but once we're able to eliminate that and ask the world, hey, this is who I seek to be and this is where I want to go, I was able to say, you know what, I've done this before. I went to three colleges in three years. So my mom said, you've never been to Iowa. What would you want to go to school? I grew up in a very close, you know, close house. Mom was very overprotective, you know. And so once I was able to go to, I went to three colleges in three years, Iowa Central, Sierra Nevada College, and then St. Cloud. And I was only 19 years old. So not many kids can go somewhere, travel somewhere every single year and try something new. When I was in Nevada, I was the only person of color. There was only four people in this entire school that were black. And I was like, well, I don't fit in. 
Well, I didn't let that I don't fit in limit me. I met friends from all walks of life. I was a paddleboarder, hiking, kayaking, obviously a thing a person of color does not do. But I got out of my comfort zone. I was like, snowboarding is fun. This is fun. This is fun. And those experiences gave me the confidence to say, hey, if I was able to tackle that fear, what's different from me doing this? And so once, once I was able to do that, um, the, you know, using the thinking grow rich since then, when I, I wrote my very first book, literally when I was in fourth grade. And, but I had suppressed that memory because I let life get in the way. I forgot. You forget things that you've done because the, accomplish, the accomplishments sometimes we feel or accomplishments may not, you know, we may not see it as one because other people put you down, blah, blah, blah. And when I was 19 years old, I picked up a book, again, Think and Grow Rich, and it taught me about the power of the subconscious mind, the difference between, between the subconscious mind and the conscious mind. And I got so much confidence in writing that, and reading that book. I wrote my very first book called the power of the subconscious mind, um, yeah. pocket, a pocketbook guide to success. And when I was able to really hone in how to differentiate your subconscious mind, your conscious mind, and how to attract the things you want in your life, again, you have to define who you are in life. So many people are convoluted living, we call them the walking dead. They, they're living purposely on purpose. And when you don't have a purpose, you're just going day by day, grind by grind, and you fall into the word called contentment. Now, contentment is an oxymoron. Sometimes we feel that we can strive for more, and we always can, but there comes a realm or a plateau that says, well, what else is out there? What else can I do? Have I done it all? And, you know, as humans, we can, you know, skydive, we can do all those things, but once you run out of activities, it's called life. You run out of things to do in life. Your, your, your date ultimately expires. And so when I was able to build that confidence, I said, well, what else can I do? Because when I started pick up in books like Think and Go Rich, I didn't necessarily see the same authors that represent my struggle. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a lack of diversity in certain books, especially in the self-help realm. So when I wrote that first book, The Power of the Subconscious Mind, I planted the seed in the back of the book of all my books that I was going to come out with. And what I've been doing throughout those years is being able to live up to those books. So The Power of the Subconscious Mind was my first book. And I released my second book called The Essence of Inspiration. And ever since then, I've just been doing my best to be an inspiration to others because, again, I'm no regular, I'm no different than any single person. I have goals, I have things I'm overcoming, insecurities, doubts, but those doubts is what keep me going because if I want to be the person that I know God has intended me to be, I have to get out of the realm that, you know, insecurity keeps people as lax. So you can, because I know I can, and I've been able to prove it not only to others, but it started with me proving it to myself. Love it. Last, I, I know we're pressed for time, but I got a question. If there is somebody watching our channel or this video and they haven't picked up Thinking Go Rich or they haven't picked up self-development books, why would you recommend them to pick up a book and read? Now, it could be your book. It could be this book. It could be whatever. The act of getting a book, I think, is more important than what book you should get. Obviously, if it's in self-development, more power to you because then you'll be able to learn and adapt and be able to do a lot more with it. But why should people read Thinking Go Rich, in your opinion? Thinking Go Rich is a very key tool towards anyone defining success. It is a book that Napoleon Hill genuinely studied the most successful people in history. And he's one of the first people to do it so well to the point where he's had the success even years and years after his passing. And so everyone in their life wants to be successful. I have not met a person in life that says, hey, I want to live up to be broke, homeless, not having food. It just doesn't work that way. If I look at anywhere in the world, everyone wants to have a safe place to sleep, eat, money in their bank account, and they want to have a family. And everyone wants to be either loved, wanted, and appreciated. And when you're able to think and grow rich of who you are in life and what you desire in life, it's because everyone deserves riches. Everyone wants these different things, but not everyone actually goes after them. Well, why? It's because they let life get in the way of who they are in life. Yes, we can go get a job, get a degree, go down that typical lifestyle, but that is the, not the norm nowadays. We're in 2019, 2020s. Everyone nowadays either has an iPhone, has a MacBook. We are in the most technology, you know, driven economy where picking up a book for wherever you are in life, if you don't pick up a book to get you to where you want in life, because someone has been there. Someone's been a doctor before. Someone's been an author. Someone has done something that you may have interest in doing. Until you learn from someone else's experiences, you're going to stay unexperienced. So 
Think and Grow Rich is one of the key books that taught me, hey, I can do anything to desire because who in the world came up with an iPhone? Who came up in the world with a phone, a car, you know, clothes? The ideals that we seek to create is no different than the ideals that we are wearing. The clothes that we're wearing is an idea from someone that came from their head. They manifested it by putting it on paper, and they did the necessary action steps. And Thinking Real Rich is one of those books that gives you key action steps to how to really take your life from point A to point B and ultimately to point Z. I love it. So am I getting those books for my copy? Am I getting a signed copy of those books? Uh, is that what's going on after this? I have no problem. Honestly, just reach out to me. Well, so you, you don't send it. I need to yeah. buy it on Amazon. I, I love supporting authors. Don't don't send it. I was just, that was a joke. Don't send it. If you want to autograph it, it's cool. But other than that, I, I want to buy it on, on Amazon. I, I, I like to support all those people. But listen, I think I'd like to do another session. And I think it has its own place. Conscious mind, subconscious mind, I think is a very, very confusing subject for a lot of people that are not experiencing it or have not been studying it and learning what it is and how to utilize it, how to control it, how do you overcome the limiting belief that you have. So you and I are going to be in contact. Definitely reach out to my team. I like to set up a time where we dedicate about a 25-minute block where we purely are just talking about conscious mind and we're like going to break it down for a five-year-old to be able to understand what a subconscious mind is and what conscious because i think if you can master those two principles and just that i think it will definitely revolutionize your life internally and externally you just right. gotta you gotta study it you gotta put in the time so you and i are gonna be in contact for sure brother i appreciate it man thank you so much for being here thank you bye-bye